In this video I will explain how to create an emission report. This is accomplished by following two steps. First step is about reporting information monitored during the year. Second step is about creating the report when the year is over, along with some additional information. The importance of this video is that it is mandatory for companies to create the emission report in FEDIS MRV. However, you will learn in this tutorial that not all required information to create the emission report needs to be reported in the system. For clarity, let's recall the full process of reporting, taking the first reporting period as an example. In 2017, companies have drafted monitoring plans which have been assessed by an accredited verifier. In 2018, companies will monitor emission data. In 2019, an emission report needs to be produced and verified by an accredited verifier, which will draft a verification report. Assuming a positive outcome of the verification, the emission report is set as verified and company can submit it to the commission. On the basis of a successful verification report, a document of compliance is made available in the system. From 30 April, Commission and Flag will be able to consult the verified emission report and the document of compliance. From 30 June, data shall be made public, according to Article 21 of the regulation. Highlighted in yellow we see those actions which are mandatory to be done in the system. Let's focus on the creation of the emission report which is what concerns this tutorial. Remember that the first step is to record monitoring information for the reporting period. We need fuel consumption, CO2 emissions, cargo carried, distance traveled and time at sea. This information needs to be collected on a per voyage basis and on a port activity basis. Take note that not all voyages in port calls fall in the scope of the regulation, but we will disregard this fact for the purpose of this tutorial. Once the reporting period comes to its end, monitoring information from voyages in port calls will have to be aggregated to be included in the emission report. Once we have the annual aggregated data for the year, we move to step 2 to create the emission report. On top of the annual aggregated figures which will be fetched from what was recorded in Step 1, additional information will be required on ship particulars, emission sources, company and verifier details, as per Annex 2 of the Implementing Regulation 2016-1927. With all data recorded in the system we can then generate a version of the emission report and submit it to the verifier for verification. You may remember that I mentioned before that not all information needs to be recorded in the system. Well, in fact, although you need to monitor voyage and port activity basis, this is not required to be recorded in the system. The mandatory requirement is for the annual aggregation. This has to be done in FEDIS MRV. However, for companies deciding to use the system, to report on a per voyage basis and port activity basis, they will be able to make use of the functionality which makes the annual aggregation automatically. If companies decide not to report voyages in port calls, then automatic aggregation will not be possible. Another good reason for companies to report voyages in port monitoring information in the system is that it will provide essential information to the verifier for fulfilling its legal obligations. When the user creates the emission report in Step 2, the emission report will be prefilled. Annual aggregated data is retrieved from what has been reported in Step 1. Ship particulars, company and verifier details will be fetched by the system from the ship information, while emission sources can be fetched from the monitoring plan in case companies have decided to use the system to produce the monitoring plan. For those companies not having the monitoring plan in the system, emission sources will have to be filled in manually. Still, the user will have full control to amend the content of the emission report before submitting it to the verifier. Before we move to the system for a live demo, I would like you to retain that step 1 refers to actions that will be carried out under the ship page, while step 2 will be carried out in the emission report page. So, now that we have seen the process in theory, let's see how this can be accomplished in the system. We are in the My Fleet page consulting our ships. 
noting that no filter is used on the reporting period, and that the emission report status column is empty, we conclude easily that none of these ships have an emission report created. Let's use ship iron gust to create an emission report. I recall that step one is about entering monitoring information. This will be done through actions. Ship. Edit. Step two will be done later through actions. Emission report. Create. We proceed to step one. You will note that step two can also be started from here. This is a redundant option to provide more flexibility. Let's focus on the three relevant tabs for the step one to create the emission report. I bring back the initial slides to make a link with what was already explained. The first and the second relevant tabs are related to voyages and port calls. The third is related to the annual aggregated figures. Remember that if you record in the system monitoring on a per voyage basis and on a port activity basis, then the annual aggregation can be done automatically. For demoing purposes, I will enter voyages and import information. We start with voyages. The system presents a search form which will allow filtering information once the list becomes too big. Below, the data grid presents the reported voyage which is empty. Let's click to add a voyage. We need to identify the port of departure and the port of arrival. Note the difference between a non-EU port, where the port is entered as free text, and an EU port, where the port is selected from a list. We specify the time at sea. As our ship has no ice class, we cannot discriminate time at sea on ice. Remember the regulation for sea, that that time at sea shall exclude anchorage. Therefore, if time spent at an anchorage is nevertheless relevant to understand the consumption of a voyage, companies may report it separately. We move to distance traveled, where the distance through ice is also disabled for the same reason. In the Cargo and Transport Work tab, because the ship in this example is a general cargo, the regulation requires that cargo is recorded as dead weight carried, and, optionally, mass could also be used. The system will then calculate the transport work for both units of cargo. In the Fuel Consumption tab, records of fuel consumed and related CO2 emissions may be entered as follows. Click Add Consumption. Select the fuel type. You may select to enter the amount in mass or volume. Enter the amount. In case you opt by volume, the density will be required. Although the system provides a default value, this value is editable. You may select differentiated criteria. For containers, the options are on ballast or on laden voyages. As a side note, the list of possible differentiated criteria will depend on the ship type. For instance, oil tankers will also include dynamic positioning, while chemical tankers will include cargo heating. In this example we will leave this field empty. The emission factor is set by default by the system, but this value can also be amended as necessary. We click Save. This process should be repeated to all the fuel used in the concerned voyage. The last tab should be used when direct emission monitoring is used instead of deriving the value from the fuel consumption. In such cases, you simply specify the amount of CO2 emitted. The same differentiated criteria can also be specified. For simplicity I will leave this table empty. And we click Save to store the voyage information. You may repeat this process for all the other voyages throughout the years. Moving now to the tab, to report on a port activity basis, we will see the same setup. A search form to filter information, and a data grid listing port call records. We click to add a port emission. We specify the port call details. In the Fuel Consumption tab the process is similar to the Voyage Consumption, but in this case you have to specify if the consumption is related to a movement within the port or at birth. Remember that the Emission Report requires that consumption at birth is well identified. Here we can also report emissions from direct measurements in a similar process. For simplicity, we leave this list empty, and we click Save to store the port information. 
like for the voyages, you may repeat this process for all the other port calls throughout the years. We now look into the monitoring on an annual basis. Again a search form is available to filter information, and a data grid lists the annual records. We click at Annual Emissions. The first tab identifies the reporting period. Noting the early stage of this demo, we have included years 2016 and 2017, but please keep in mind that the first reporting period will be 2018. The inclusion of years 2016 and 17 is for testing and demo purposes. We select 2017. As the voyages in port calls records are from this year, immediately buttons and period it's become enabled. In this exercise we will not address from date field nor the to date field. These fields will be explained in other tutorial videos. If we go shortly through the tabs in this window we will note that all are empty. Remember that while recording monitoring data from Voyager port call is on a voluntary basis, recording annual aggregated monitoring data is mandatory. As in our example we have recorded voyages in port calls, we can now take advantage of the automatic data filling. The system provides clarifications on the calculations and alerts to the fact that previous data will be overwritten. We confirm. If we now browse through the same tabs we see that data has been aggregated and all relevant fields have been populated. We have concluded step 1. Let's now move to step 2. Remember that we can trigger step 2 from this page, so we make use of this option. The system asks for which reporting period we wish to create an emission report. This is because we may have annual records for more than one year. Our list displays only 2017, because we only have an annual record for this year. So we select the year and click Save. The system triggers a message noting that the year is not over yet. This is because this tutorial is being created in December 2017. So we acknowledge the message and click Confirm to proceed. Another message is triggered to inform that it will not be possible to change the reporting period. This is due to technical constraints. Still, the emission report can be deleted and created again, provided it is not already submitted to the verifier or made public. We click to confirm. We have left the ship page and have arrived to the emission report page where we can address the content of step 2. The layout of the screen is similar to what you have seen before. A line for navigation buttons and workflow options. A section for the context information of the emission report where we can note the initial status at a draft. And then the several tabs holding the content of the emission report. Note that we can go back to the ship page through the button ship. You will note that the emission report button will include a new option to edit the emission report for 2017. Remember that through the years, each ship will have several emission reports, so this list will increase. We look now into the My Fleet list of ships. I would like you to note that a new row is available for our ship. We have the initial record where no emission report is available, and we have one additional row, where an emission report for 2017 is identified. This is because the My Fleet list is a combination of all your ships, and all your emission reports in the same page. From the moment you start recording emission reports, if you would like to have a list of your ships, you should use the reporting period filter set to none. If you would like to get all the emission reports of a specific reporting period, then the same filter should be used. Coming back to the full list, note that the list is sorted by default with latest reporting period on top. Therefore, all records without emission report will be listed in the end. Now what if we need to edit the emission report we have just created? Well, if you follow the action button on the record which has no emission report, the system presents you the option to create another emission report. That is not what we need. We want to edit the emission report for 2017. You can easily guess that this will be possible if you go through the action button on the row which includes the emission report for 2017. Now you see that a create button has been replaced by an edit and delete button. So we click to edit. To finalize step 2 on generating a version of the emission report, it is fundamental to understand first the workflow process, 
and an explanation of the content for the emission report. These elements will be covered in other tutorial videos.